Good morning. My name is Michael Horde. My wife died of cancer two months and six days ago. She was a 38-year dedicated employee to the, New York, to the state of New York, and her pension was denied. Because of the 15-day law that I'm finding out more and more people don't know about, it worked for the state, and uh, I'm going against the advice of public officials, and I'm speaking out. It may cost me the, uh, the benefits a spouse is entitled to, but I don't care. And, well, what happened, I had my first meeting on the 20th of December, last Friday. And uh, I spent eight hours writing up this agenda that, as a public, as them, them being public servants and me being of the public, I was thinking I was going to be in charge of the meeting, I was going to explain to them what I demanded, and find out how they could help me and help me devise a plan to go about getting it done. So, uh, and this is a letter I wrote them two days later explaining why I couldn't take their advice and be quiet about this. Uh, so let me do it real quick and, and read this and, and, and you'll understand. State and county employees in New York State, pay attention. It could affect you. It could affect a lifetime of pension that you've been building up for your family and, uh, and they won't get it. So pay attention, join the movement that we are working on getting started, and uh, let's, get this, let's get this fixed. Okay, so here we go. My meeting agenda was gonna cover several so topics. Collecting Kathy's earned pension after 38 years of service. A civil rights lawsuit I'm gonna bring up against the state, I'm hoping to public awareness of New York State's 15-day law and the ultimate removal of said law. So, let me start off by explaining about Kathy real quick. She was diagnosed with cancer in November, November of 2017. Uh, for two years, she had it. She did not ball up and, and wilt away. She became stronger than she had ever, had ever before. Uh, just not as a warrior, but in her her humanity and wanting to help others affected by this disease to, to help them learn what to expect between diagnosis and their first treatment. It's a very confusing path you have to take. And and we wrote a blog in an online journal uh, helping people like that. In one article, uh, Diagnosed with Cancer, What Now? Kathy's Team Fist Bump Shares Their Experience. It was viewed by nine th over 9,000 times from around the world. Uh, she started Kathy's Team Fist Bump, uh, American Cancer Society Relay for Life Team. Over two years, we raised quite a bit of money for the American Cancer Society. She has a heart of gold. She gave. And to have her name and her legacy stolen so blatantly and just like so cruelly uh, has to be, you know, that, that I, I can't live with that. Uh, so here's, here's, okay, so... Let's get on to uh, collecting her earned pension. Timeline and key points. Kathy had 38 years of dedicated service as a New York State employee. Kathy was past eligible to retire. She could have already retired, but to her, retiring meant, it meant admitting defeat to cancer. And she wasn't going to let cancer beat her, so she kept working. Sickness didn't matter. She could go to work, leave early if she had to. Uh, on October 18th, Paperwork was filled out for her retirement form. We had a notary come to her hospital room and notarize it. On October 19, 2019, I overnight mailed it to the New York State Retirement System. On the form, Kathy chose October 21st as her retirement date. She passed away on October 25th, four days later. On a letter I received from New York State Retirement System, dated October 3rd, which was obviously a misprint, I don't know when this letter was written, uh, it was necessary to change the effective date of your retirement to November 3rd, because the law specifically states that an application must be on file in this office for a period of 15 days before it can be, become effective. Another letter, come three days after she died, is dated October 28th, informs me Due to Ms. Hoard passing prior to her date of retirement, her case has been canceled. Her application has been referred to the Ordinary Death Benefit Unit. How many of you state and county employees of New York State, or New York, knew about this 15-day law? Let me continue. Uh, 
where we stand at now, it's, I've talked to them because of uh, some ruckus I raised earlier. Uh, they got a lot of calls from assemblymen in public, and uh, they called me. And I didn't have to call and wait for the hour wait that you have to wait and sometimes get hung up on trying to get through these people. But these were people directly from the comptroller's office, uh, stating they never could officially say that. I, they, they told me I could not collect the, the uh, post-retirement death benefit because of the law and their hands are tied. However, there is a Senate bill, S5763B, that is currently stalled in, 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 in the uh, House. Uh, it passed the Senate unanimously, but when it got to the, the, uh, the Assembly, New York State Assembly, uh, they denied it. They, they shut it down, and that's who I'm speaking to right now with this agenda in my hand. Uh, and I asked him, so are you at the same assembly? And he said yes. And, and uh, anyway, let me continue, but don't come out. Uh, that bill is sitting and is stalled in front of the Ways and Means Committee, and it's going to just disappear unless people make noise about it. And that will help people like me and there's other people. Uh, so let's not let that happen. Uh, so anyway, I had to ask them on the 20, what? <clears throat> on the 20, I apologize. Eleven days ago, I know that. Eleven days ago, I talked to him, and I had to accept this ordinary death benefit because things get kind of tight with just one check. And uh, I missed a whole month; I couldn't go to work. Uh, they assured me that once this Senate bill passed, the ordinary death benefit that I'm asked for paperwork will be able to get transferred over to what she's entitled to. And uh, Anyway, they told me they were going to mail it that day, and it's 11 days later, 12 days later, and I still haven't received it. So I don't know if they're mad at me for talking like this, but, you know, whatever. Uh, I called and left them a voicemail today. It's holiday season, so maybe. I don't know. I've received other letters from, dated from the day before Christmas, uh, and they mailed it on the 20th or 21st or something. Uh, okay, so... Let's go to the 13th Amendment violation. 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution abolished slavery and involuntary servitude except after punishment for a crime. Okay, so after 38 years of employment with New York State, Kathy was past eligible to retire. There is no reason someone already eligible to retire shouldn't have their choice of a retirement date. When New York State Retirement System informed Kathy she had to work for an additional 15 days before her retirement would become effective, they are, in essence, forcing her to, to work or remain on the books longer than she wanted to and was able. That's a clear-cut example of forced labor by way of threat to take away a 38-year pension. I've written emails to several civil rights attorneys asking if they will represent Kathy and me in this lawsuit. So far, one said he's too busy and I hadn't received gotten a reply from the others and that's kind of getting me nervous but I'm sure there's someone out there that can see what I'm seeing you know they're forcing you to work 15 days and you're already eligible to retire you know you're on your deathbed you're not gonna make it 15 days okay, let's go on public awareness in New York State's 15-day law about me and the events that bring me before you I as Kathy's husband sadly find myself in a unique position to help many New York State employees that I've come to love for the compassion they showed my wife over her two-year battle with cancer. The best way I know how to show my appreciation for their support and my wife, of my wife and I is to lead this movement. That ultimate goal is to ensure that what happened to Kathy and I will never happen to you guys. I'm asking you all, the people we have elected into office, to help me by using your connections and abilities to move through a very confusing system to effectively and efficiently see that S5763B gets signed by Governor Cuomo. Additionally, I want to see a new bill created to completely abolish the 15-day law, making it possible for New York State employees that are already eligible to retire but have decided to continue working, either because they love their job or are forced to because they want to get Social Security benefits maximum, 
to rest easy with the knowledge that should they one day have an accident or illness that costs them their life before they can submit their retirement forms, their post-retirement death benefits will automatically be given to the beneficiary they have on file, ensuring their legacy to family is honored. Number two, my plans to make the public aware and ultimately succeed in making these changes. First, I, re I request that we form a team whereupon we work together to keep each other up to date on the progress we are each making on our individual tasks. And most importantly, I request all of you to give me a timeline to expect things to happen. Without that, I am liable to think that you aren't doing anything to help with this issue. I tend to want everything to happen tomorrow, and I know it will take time. Next, I want to be made aware anytime there is any type of legislator hearing, legislation hearing where S5763B is going to be mentioned. I want to be present at these hearings with anyone wanting to show their support with me, and if possible, I want to be a speaker, a public speaker, at these hearings. If I cannot speak before the hearing itself, I would like to formally request audience in private before the hearing with the chairperson overseeing the hearing. Next, I request all of your help in making every hearing a media event by allowing me to speak to the press before or after the hearing, whichever you feel will be more beneficial. I would also like you there for me to stand beside me for these conferences. I request your aid in setting up with a press con I request your aid in setting me up with a press conference from the steps of the state cabinet. I request that you give me advice on other ways, not known to someone new to this, and how to effectively use the media to bring this to the public's attention. Additionally, and this is just handwritten in here because I didn't think about it at the time, I want to be put in contact with other families that have been affected by this law. I sent an email to a widow in Port Jervis but haven't heard back. Another widow of a county worker is on board our team. I saw a News 12 interview with a widow in Brewster. I haven't been able to contact her. I don't know how to. That's the agenda. Two days later, I sent them this letter after they recommended I be quiet as far as what I'm doing now, making it public. Good morning, Assemblywoman Gunther, Assemblyman Smith, Assemblyman Bradnick, Emily, Tom, and Suzanne. Please accept my sincere thank you for taking an interest in Kathy and my case. It was a pleasure meeting you in person, Assemblyman Bradnick and Emily, A to Assemblyman Smith. Also, it was a pleasure speaking to Tom, Chief of Staff of Aileen Gunther, on the phone. I was happy to learn that you are all from both parties behind Kathy and I in this problem. However, my biggest concern following our meeting was learning that the great divide between the Democrats and the Republicans of the Assembly New York State Assembly extends into this area, an area where simple compassion should be all that is required to come to an agreement. Why is that? If you truly care for your constituents, then you should shake hands and get to work approving this bill. Both parties are affected. The agenda form I created for the meeting was not a joke in my eyes, or the public following me have, or the public following we have many being New York State and New York County employees. Emily, if you only knew how much I appreciated you taking the time to slowly read through it while I listened to Assemblyman Bradnick explain the system to me. Thank you. I understand you are all wanting to make your jobs as simple as possible, and a big help would be for me not to make so much noise, possibly angering some of the people you have to deal with. I thought long and hard on this, and here's what I decided and why. Number one, first and foremost, my wife was a fighter and warrior in the strongest sense of the word. This is her legacy we are talking about. It's what she spent a lifetime earning, not me. I know my wife would be silent. Would not be silent. Oh, Lord, if you know her, you know. She would want to cause the politicians in Albany and New York City to become angry at her for speaking the truth, something I was told at our meeting we might not want to do. Why? We voted them in. And if they are doing this to the people that elected them into office, then we have every God-given right to be mad. They need to be shamed for wanting to steal the average person's life savings while they have loopholes in the same law 
from the same law that allows them to dip into the pot. It's a disgrace. Number two, because we, because there are many others that have had this issue arise before me, and not just New York State employees, but New York County employees as well, that use the New York State retirement system, and because I'm assuming they were told to just be patient with the process take form, like I was, I disagree with B-side. Since realistically, realistically, the chances are I will never see Kathy's pension benefits, I am willing to chance messing it up by practicing my rights of freedom of speech. That shouldn't be what ruins my chances of having the state honor my wife's 38 years of dedicated service. And right here, I wrote a little, what do you call it, asterisk, as I was proofreading this, getting it ready for the meeting. I could feel my wife hugging me as I proofread this. And I could. At that moment, I could feel her, and I knew I was doing the right decision. Okay, number three. There are retirement eligible individuals currently working for the state and counties under the New York State Retirement System that do not realize it yet, but somewhere in their future an accident or illness will cause them to die before the 15 days have passed that the state demands before an employee's chosen retirement date can be made effective. After they pass away, the state will contact their, phone, their family like they did to me, and while using words of condolence to start the conversation, they will finish it by stating that the lifetime pension benefits their loved one has earned as part of his or her legacy will not be honored. This is too important an issue for any man to know about and be told to be quiet. The 13th Amendment issue, number four. New York State prides itself on being a state of great diversity and compassion to its fellow man. How can they go against the 13th Amendment by forcing an employee to work an extra 15 days when that person probably won't live that long? and a person that has already, is already past eligible to retire. I'll tell you, it's because the state has created this, this cushion for themselves to give their employees time to die so they can keep the money. I bet there's something in this law that covers this forced labor issue with words like administrative processing time or some such. That's a big deal. The 15-day law needs to be stricken from the law books. Not in five years, but today. Now. Present. This next paragraph is... Anybody who's had a problem with this, I want you to contact these people because they seem to be interested. They were never aware of the 15-day law. They're the only government watchdog group I know of in New York that looks out for retirees. So this is where I talk to their name. They're, they're, they call the Retirement Public Employees Association, RPEA, RPEA. So here's what I told them. I know I mentioned the Retirement Public Employees Association to you during the meeting, and I think it would be wise to contact them at your earliest convenience. They are aware of this case already and are reviewing it. I saw. I saw the legislation that Assemblyman Colin Smith, who Emily was sent in his stead, has introduced the double dip loophole, and the legislation Assembly Brad, Assemblyman Bradneck is in favor of passing, and that's strip corruption, strip corrupt politicians of their state pensions. And I respect you both for it, and I think the public needs to be aware of your standing on these topics and remember it in future elections. I hope my decision to practice both my freedom of speech and my moral obligation to fellow man do not alter the decision you made to help us with this issue. Think of it as a different strategy being put to play, perhaps a strategy that will allow this bill to pass straight to Governor Cuomo's ink pen, unlike past strategies. If you're a state employee, I urge you, or just a concerned citizen who, who knows Kathy or, or, or is behind uh, what I'm doing, contact your local New York State Assembly man or woman and ask them why Senate Bill 5763B was not passed before them. Why they failed it when it's a, a bill of compassion. I want, I want you to hear their answers. I mean, they, they, they can always talk. They'll never be stuttered. They won't stutter. They're going to explain. Why was voted against, why this bill was voted against by them? It's a bill of compassion. Also, let me skip down here. Tell your senators and congressmen that the 15-day law is infringing on your 13th Amendment. 
related to this bill. We need to get this bill out of being stalled because that's what they do when they get when they when they get uh, when they get voted against and get sent back to the Ways and Means Committee. They sit there like they've been like it's been doing, and eventually it's just going to fade away. It's going to just vaporize because nobody's taking interest. In it. We cannot let that happen because there's too many of us that this can happen to, and it has happened. Go to Facebook page, Kathy's Team Fist Bump. Just look up Kathy's Team Fist Bump on Facebook and you'll be able to learn more about Kathy and what we've done for cat cancer patients uh, and the caregivers and what a, a, a beautiful person she was. And the first post on there you'll see is a link to the petition. And I welcome you to, to add your comments and, and, and take part in the conversation and, and, and the solution. Hashtag, just for Kathy. That's all you gotta do and you'll find the petition that way also and it will probably bring up a lot of other things too, I'm not sure. I, had, I, mean, I tried it one time to see if the petition was there because I'm not too familiar with hashtags but I know it works. So I want to thank you all, especially the ones that stuck around here for 20 minutes and listened to me. I apologize, I'm not the best speaker but it has to be done and nobody else has done it and I, I, I'm the person. I'm going to spearhead this for you and, and my anger at them right now and my, my love for my wife is, uh, is feeding me. Uh, so, today is December 31st, 2019. You know what my New Year's resolution is? I hope you'll join me in, in helping me probably succeed in, uh, in achieving my first resolution ever. I don't think any other resolutions ever worked out for me. But, uh, I thank you, War Bear, for all Kathy Team Fist Bumpers out there. Know the history of War Bear, and you can learn War Bear's history. He's a, a, a fighter. He's there for courage. He stands for love. Uh, he's seen a lot of chemo treatments. Happy New Year.